Hello everyone, it's Kim Murden here and we've just gone past the Vernal Equinox in um, obviously September so I want to try and get out into this field before the sheep all eat all of the yarrow. I did go out a couple of weeks back with my dogs and it was a bit chaotic with the dogs and also I went further up onto the downlands where the cows and the cattle and the um, sheep have been for quite a long time and they had eaten everything down. This field hasn't been grazed for quite a few months and the sheep have only just come back in but they will eat yarrow and that's going to be my herb of the month. So let's first of all start with its family. It's a composite family member of plants. So that means on this flower head, each it's a compact flower head. So each of these little flowers on this will make a seed. And then we're going to talk about its different names. So yarrow is its common name. Achillea millifolium is its Latin name. And some of its other names are things like Knight's milfoil or uh, milfoil or thousand leaf weed or carpenter's weed, staunch weed, woundwort, um, yarrowy. So some of these are giving, it, giving us a clue as to what this plant does. Long, long use on the battlefield, um, like Achilles, the wounded healer. He is said to have found its use on the battlefield by stuffing it into the wounds of his soldiers. Uh, didn't do him much good for his, his wounded heel. But, um, and that carpenter's weed, I had someone in my clinic last week who was a carpenter and he was telling me how he had cut himself with a jigsaw on his hand and he had packed his wound with, uh, with the leaf. Uh, you can see and gone off to A&E and they said, what have you done there? You know, and he said he'd cut it, but they were like, wow, it stopped. You could see, he said he could literally see as soon as he put it in, it just stopped all the blood pumping out of those tiny micro vessels. So its other name, milfoil, comes from the fact, hopefully you can see it there, these tiny, tiny, lots and lots and lots of leaves. So thousand fold leaves. So you can use the flower head, you can use the leaves as well. And as I said, you know, long use in staunching bleeding, um, nosebleeds. In the days when bloodletting was good, it was also said to, if you irritated your nostrils, to cause your um, nose to bleed. So to release the idea that it will release pressure on its head, on your head. Also long use as a um, fever herb. So to bring, to uh, bring um, well-being when you've got the onset of a cold or uh, fever to really burn those toxins out of the system. To, to, the diaphoretic it opens all the blood vessels, makes you sweat, um, but will regulate the fever, fever response as well, which is what we need when we're ill. We need a very robust uh, action in acute infections. It's what we call also among the herbalists, the herbalist herb, because you can use it for so many things. It gets used uh, a lot in cardiovascular issues with hypertension, angina, um, and so on and so forth with that. And we'll actually say vasotonic, so it tones the venous tissues, so good if you've got varicose veins, for example. It's also good for lots of women's menstrual problems, whether there's a lack of menstruation or there's too much. So uh, lots of uses there for women. And um, just, th just thinking of you know, the broad broadness of a herb is such a delight to learn about because sometimes when we're out and about, we might only have one herb to hand. And if we know enough about the families and then the actions of the plants, then we can use with a bit of wisdom much of what we see around us. So if that's something that also tickles your fancy, not just by looking at these little videos. Um, if you're around and about in my area in Lewis, I do a very informal and friendly Herb of the Month. I think it's um, the third Tuesday of every month at the moment. We're about six or so of us gather together and we'll just look at one plant and all the uses it can have. And it's historical uses, like I've mentioned some for this. And because it helps us embed how a plant has been used by human beings throughout history. For example, what else was I learning about yarrow with my group? We were talking about how, for example, in 
Orkney at this time of year. They used to make a yarrow tea for melancholia for that change of the season. You know, I think when sh things shift and we think, oh, no, the summer is over and we're heading into winter. Or in Sweden, it was used a lot for um, aches and pains and in beers. And that's to say yarrow is a derivation of the Anglo-Saxon to be um, a, an ale herb, an ale herb. You know, lots before hops came into wide usage lots of herbs were used for making ales so i hope that just gives you a little introduction to the delights of yarrow which as i say you know will grow where animals haven't grazed it grows obviously in fields along wayside you'll see it alongside footpaths a very nice robust plant got a nice sturdy stem that reminds me the stems are used in the Chinese divination system, the I Ching. So they're made from yarrow stalks. And you can, I've still got people I know who've said, yeah, they've made their own I Ching using yarrow stalks. So um, where else do you need to know? It's so you can as, just repeat, you know, the, the leaf will grow all year round and really good one to have outside your back door, maybe if there's anyone who suffers in your house from nosebleeds or is prone to cutting themselves. Um, Good to just pack into the herb, into the wound, sorry, the herb into the wound. So, um, yeah, and to say, do like and subscribe and comment to my YouTube channel. Also, if you want to go onto my mailing list, you can go onto my website, kimmurden.com, and there's a drop down box where you can subscribe to my mailing list. Also, on there, coming up in the end of October 2023, I'm going to be doing a one day winter herb homemaking workshop where we're going to look at all sorts of herbs that can be used in your medicine chest over winter so all these the times when we get colds and coughs and maybe tummy aches can feel a bit down can feel a bit achy so we're going to have a really hands-on day make some of our own medicines and also discuss the different applications of herbs so that people feel confident once more that this knowledge that has been ha usually handed down generation to generation is now still vibrant and alive in our households. So I hope you enjoyed that little introduction to Yarrow and thanks to my lovely friend Andrew who edits these films and um, if he can manage it I hope he's going to put up a few pictures of when the dogs and I were doing it because it was very funny. Uh, they say you shouldn't film with um, animals and certainly one shouldn't. But I'd just say that um, one of the dogs, he did start to eat this to, to prove that, that cats, dogs, cattle, humans, we, when we um, have access to the right plants, I think we know instinctively, we know what is good for us. So thanks again for listening. See you again soon. Thank you.